Hello and welcome to Squeeze in English. It's about educating, not just learning. Episode 10. Immersion on the go. A practical guide. To acquire a new habit, you need to get rid of the bad one first. In this episode, we are gonna apply this rule to the English immersion. We are gonna take a look at everyday activities to see how to practice English in sometimes a surprising way when you decide what to watch on Netflix next time, ask yourself, do I really want to watch it in Czech language or whatever is your native language? Or let's do something for my English and let's watch it in original. In other words, am I doing now the best for my future self? For my new identity as we mentioned in previous episode. Set a strict time and place for your study session. It is scientifically proven that you can remember much more and you will be able to really stick to your new habits when you do that. Also, it helps to avoid all distractions like social media. So set an offline place unless you need internet for English studying. But let's discuss immersion, which is more about subconscious learning. Kind of like learning something by the way. Let's start with making your environment optimal for English studying. And this is another part of subconscious immersion. Stick some English quotes or posters all over your place. Keep books in English on your desk so you can read a little when you have even just a few minutes. Remember new habit must be easy have bookmarked an English radio station or podcast instead of check once or again whatever is your language. Keep it visible and accessible. Another great part of this subconscious language immersion is that you can easily connect it with another enjoyable activity like having an ice cream. Well, of course, if it goes together with your new identity, of course. If you want to lose weight or if you want to be an athlete, that doesn't really go together. Another example. It can be a listening to an audiobook in bath, drinking beer or drinking beer in the bath. Just whatever fits you. Apart from private English lessons, you can meet an English friend, a fellow student of English or just any friend and encourage each other. This healthy competition will help in moments when you start to feel hopeless. So let's jump right in. We have 10 tips to practice simultaneously all the four skills reading writing listening and speaking part one reading tip number one set social media for english language and you will never feel like procrastinating when scrolling down facebook anymore because actually you study think about how much time you spend there and how simple it is to switch the language. Right after that, do the same with Google. From now on, Google everything in English. 
Another effortless but useful tip is to bookmark favorite websites and set one as a homepage. So you will never miss it when you open your browser. I recommend, for example, learner's dictionaries like Cambridge, for example, because you can apply that tip from previous episode about learning at least one new word a day right after already existing habit like we talk about breakfast or lunch be grateful we have this chance in 21st century and use it tip number two blogs magazines or books choose the favorite book you've read multiple times and get an english copy Join the community online, share your hobbies, and read posts, and also contribute. That leads to, second part, writing. Tip number three, post often on Facebook or any other discussion on social media or any other website. And don't worry about mistakes too much or typing errors. Actually, when you want to write something, look up new words that you need, put it in the right context and find out right spelling. Use learner's dictionary instead of a simple dictionary in your language. Tip number four, keep a journal. It's just yours, it's personal. Write down your innermost feelings or just plans for a day. Or keep a track of your improvement. In the evening, write down all the new things you learn that day. Upgrade it by recording that and listen to yourself. That's a great technique. I used to do the same with a new vocabulary. I recorded it and I used to listen to it over and over again. You get an extra time of a very intense study material for free. If you are lucky and have a private tutor, he or she can correct your records and help you to fix the mistakes. And now let's move on to the listening. Tip number five, listen to what is fun or what you are interested in. Find podcast or a TV show that fits you. By the way, here is the right time to decide if you go for British or American English. Avoid the mistake I did, which I mentioned in episode one. If you understand at least like 60% it's good enough to enjoy it. Hack it or improve it even more by using techniques like shadowing where you speak together with a person at the same time or imitating where you repeat the same things in the same way like the person just a little bit after. The best thing about it, that it's real English. It's not some studying material or audio recording of a textbook. Listening is great because you can do it all the time. When you go for a walk while listening to something, you can also get a lot of oxygen for your brain. When you work out, when you cook, and so on. It is not so intense like reading or listening with 100% focus, but it still works fantastic. By the way, I compare the benefits of reading and listening in episode 2. And after all, we are finally getting to speaking. Tip number 6. Hang out with friends. Imagine all the activities you do normally and just imagine once a week or at least a month 
you do everything in English. You start either with a simple board game, like a Scrabble, where you can actually practice vocabulary. Then you can have a fun chat, get a little tipsy, and you can end up by singing karaoke, which is an upgrade of listening practice. Keep it fun. Imagination is endless. Number seven, private lessons with a tutor. That sounds a bit like a cliche, and of course it costs some money, but it might be the fastest way to improve, cause an experienced tutor can highlight what to improve, and he or she can help you to speed up the whole process by giving you some tips on how to have your study more effective. Another chance is a free language exchange. Or tip number eight, attend a meeting. I used to go a lot to couchsurfing meetings everywhere I lived. And apart from meeting many great people from all over the world, it was also the best chance to speak naturally in English and not just few easy repetitive phrases, which sometimes happens when you work at a restaurant or coffee shop. If there are no couchsurfing meetings, just check what's going on in your town or city and there will be something else for sure. For example, Mormons, they are everywhere. You can chat a little in English with them if you don't mind listening to content not very useful for everyday English. Or the last crazy tip, you can pretend you are a foreigner in your city. Ask locals for direction, tips for best restaurants, or just visit an information center where people usually speak English very well and, you know, just ask for history of the city and something like that. You see, there are so many options. Tip number nine, work in a multicultural environment. This is especially good when others are on higher level, so you can learn from them. A shortcut and a bit of cheating, to be honest, is to have a native speaker as a life partner. If the language is your target language, of course. Do it. You won't need any of the previous tips anymore. Last but not least, two things often underestimated. Tip number 10. Thinking and subconscious learning. Our mind is with us all the time. When you walk down the street to buy groceries, think and comment what you see. You can talk loud or you can just talk to yourself in your mind. We think almost all the time, so take advantage of it and think in English every time you realize you think about something. The most impressive though is subconscious learning tip, which is this one. Stickers. Stickers with English vocabulary that you stick to literally everywhere around your place. Once with my student, we even used stickers for potatoes or frozen turkey, and it worked well. Also because it was fun. Every time you have fun, you learn more because you don't actually think that you are learning or studying something. Let's call it English as you go. Apart from stickers, just notice how many groceries have an English name on cover. Or even the list of ingredients is in English. Next time, when you are curious 
about how much sugar is in your sugar-free yogurt, check it out in English. Did you notice any other tips? How to be in touch with English even without realizing it? Let me know. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's my experience with speaking. Think like a baby who stops using its native language. It would forget. Babies listen and repeat all day, every day, hundreds and hundreds of times, until they can finally speak. Step by step, little by little. They are experts on the rule, keep it easy. Keep it fun, keep it attractive. To say it super simply, the only way to acquire a language is to understand the message of the words. There are almost as many methods as students and everybody is looking for the best one. Somebody is more visual and prefers reading or seeing a lot of pictures. Others are more audio oriented and so they prefer practice listening. You definitely know what I mean. The main advantage of immersion is, as we mentioned, it's often on subconscious level. You practice all the skills, all the methods, why you live your normal everyday life. Again, same like a baby who doesn't choose specific time for studying. It is immersed in language all the time. You may think about two common troubles with an immersion. Number one, you may think you are a beginner and maybe you would like to ask, what level do I need to start an immersion? I believe you can start as a beginner if you adapt the tips to your current level. And second, you may ask, I can't dedicate so much time to it. I need to have my life in my native language. That's understandable. You might be too busy and doing everything in English could be just so exhausting. So, apart from a set time for English, which can be one hour a day, or like we mentioned many times, even one word a day, better than nothing. So apart from that, try to spend one day a week in a complete immersion. Use all the tips we have outlined before. Do everything as you would normally do in your language. Just do it in English. It might take more energy than doing so in your native language. But on the other hand, it can also be more fun. And I know it works because I've tried all the tips. And if you also do that, I guarantee to you, you will also dream in English. If you like the podcast, please share, like, subscribe, etc. Have a great day. Thanks. Mm-hmm.